Welcome to the channel. For any of you that don't know me, my name's Nick. Today, I'm going to be showing you guys and talking to you about how you can start a business whilst you're working a full-time job. Now, the reason I feel qualified to make a video on this topic is because this is exactly what I did about five years ago when I started my online business. I was working full time for somebody else. And so were my two friends and business partners, Sam and Ed. If you're a subscriber here, you guys will know all about our story, but we document and share with you what we're learning whilst building our online business. So we've been working for ourselves for about three years full time now, and we started our online business whilst working full nine to five jobs. So you can imagine how satisfying it was uh, when we went to our bosses and said, look, Here's our res resignation. We've started our online business and I'm afraid uh, we're now going to be doing that full time. So, yeah, I, I thought I wanted to share with you guys a lot of what I've learned along the way, because if you're in this position, you're, you've got a job, maybe you don't like it, maybe you want something more, maybe you want your own business. I can say hand on heart, I've been there. I've been in that situation, as have Sam and Ed. And I think I can share with you guys some of my experience and I think it will help you and make you realize that it's very possible for you to go out there and do exactly what I did. So if you are new here and you're interested in Amazon FBA, growing online businesses, make sure you subscribe and turn on the notifications bell because that way you're going to be the first to know about useful videos just like this. If at any point you've got any questions, jump in the comments below and I'll see if I can help you out. So let's start with the basics. A lot of people say, oh, I just don't have the time. I used to say the same thing years ago and truth be told, it's a lie. It's most likely a lie because really if you audit your time and what you're doing with it, I think the majority of us have more time than we realize. So there are 168 hours in a week. How are you actually spending them? Maybe ask yourself that. For this example, let's just assume the following, and you can see the working on the screen. So let's say you work a 40 hour work week, Monday to Friday, that's quite common. Every day, that's seven days a week, you sleep for eight hours. So 56 hours of that is taken up by sleep. You get your eight hours. One hour a day is getting ready, so that's seven hours. One hour a day you're commuting to work. Now, I've made that as five hours because I'm assuming you work Monday to Friday. Seven hours you're doing housework, errands, um, things like that. Seven hours you're going to the gym and 10 hours you're spending with your family and friends. So if your schedule looks like that uh, and it looks similar to this, then you actually still have 34 hours per week remaining. So that's nearly as much time as you'd have if you have a 40 hour work week. So five hours a day is quite a lot of time. Um, I think when you actually audit and look at what you're doing and you're really honest with yourself, uh, like I was, I realized, yeah, I spend more time watching Netflix and things like that. And when I realized that, no, I, I want something more, I want to start my own business, I've got, I've got time in the evenings, I've got time at the weekend, uh, things change. And yeah, if, if you can work like that and you can shift your mindset into that way of thinking, you can build a business in your spare time whilst working a full time job. The main key with it all is obviously going to be your focus and your productivity. So how and what are you doing in those extra five hours you have every day? If you're willing to focus like this, uh, like most won't, then you can actually live like most can't. And I've heard that phrase, so I thought I'd stick it in here. You really can. If you're willing to put in the effort, create the life you want. Um, it's simple, very, very basic. Set a time aside each day to work on your business. So don't get stuck in the procrastination and research stage forever. Although that's a valuable and very important part of this journey, you need to make plans and then take action. And hold yourself accountable. You know, if you're going to do these things and you're going to work solidly on your business idea, hold yourself accountable. Maybe find someone you can confide in and tell them what you're going to be doing. Share it with someone so that next time you see them, they're like, oh, how are you doing with that? And if you haven't got any further, then you're going to have to say, oh, uh, yeah, I haven't done that. And you start to hear the excuses you come up with. Um, so that that's a good, a good bit of 
advice in my opinion. So how much time do you actually spend watching Netflix or playing video games? So have a think, ask yourself those questions and remember I'm not judging you uh, because I still waste plenty of time uh, during the week but I'm just trying to help you maybe move yourself to the mindset I had uh, when I started and it allowed me to set up this business which allowed me to quit my job and work for myself which means I can have the freedom uh, that I now enjoy. So how did I actually get started? So in the middle you can see me with my bird's nest like hair. Uh, I like it so we'll go with it. And we've got Ed uh, to the right of me in the picture and Sam here. So these are my two business partners and two good friends of mine. So I would say if you're trying to figure out maybe what you want to do, uh, that's quite exciting because you can do anything if you're willing to plan and take action. So what do you enjoy doing? Have you got a passion, something you don't mind being you know, completely invested in with all your spare time? It doesn't have to be your passion, but it will make the work seem a lot easier. So if your passion is football or animals or some really specific subject, you can take some time to do some investigation work. Try and work out if there's a community online or anywhere that you could serve with products. And if it's around your passion, it's much easier to start producing content and value for people in those communities. So over five years ago, me and my two friends, Sam, you guys know them if you're a subscriber here, we got together and we started brainstorming. So our first business idea was actually an online business directory. Now, there are actually some really funny pictures of uh, me, Sam and Ed standing with tradesmen um, in weird locations. Uh, you know, getting them on our website. And the idea was, and it works, it was advertising space for the town we live in, for the area we live in. And people signed up, paid a subscription, and we'd advertise their services on the website. So to cut a long story short, it didn't work out. A year later, we closed it down. I think we made something like a 300 pound, so around $500 loss over the course of the year. Um, but although it didn't work out, we did learn a lot from it. And we learned a lot from just going out there and giving it a go. So we just decided we wouldn't give up. We liked the idea of building an online business. And after a bit more research, we came across the Amazon FBA business model, which, as you guys will know, if you're a subscriber here, it's what we do for our business full time. So that was really how, how we got started. We built that business up whilst we were all working full time jobs. So we found our first product which was what you can see me holding in the above picture. It's a fruit infuser water bottle and they still sell quite well on Amazon. Um, the only reason we stopped selling it was because uh, it leaked quite a lot. We didn't have a very good supplier um, in hindsight, um, but we made, we made some good money from them and learned a lot about product quality. So yeah, it was again, a necessary part of the journey. So going back to the business directory, obviously it was difficult. So we were all working full-time jobs and we'd actually have to go out and see these customers uh, on our lunch breaks or before or after work. And we were quite honest. We said, look, we all work full-time, but let's come and see you, take pictures of your premises, take pictures with you, take all details for the social media channels. It was really difficult. Um, it didn't feel like something we could build up to the level that would allow us to quit our full-time jobs whilst working full-time jobs. And that's where, for me, the online business world opens so many doors uh, because there are a lot of different business models that you can do where the in income becomes quite passive. You can create systems and send your money to work. Uh, so it's a bit of a shift in mindset. So with the second business, the Amazon FBA business model, we were actually able to start selling products uh, whilst we were working full time. So we'd check our Amazon seller app and we'd sold like 10, 20 units um, in the morning. And we were like, this is crazy. We're making money whilst working another job. That's the power of Amazon FBA. So we were even making sales whilst we were asleep. And all we had to do was use our spare time to work on the business. So yeah, it was, it was difficult at times, but so worth it. Um, if you're interested in exactly really how you can start an Amazon FBA business from start to finish or an overview, check out the video you can see at the top of the screen. 
And yeah, that documents everything, well, the, the exact model we followed when we got started. So here are some business ideas for you. So these are the sort of business models I think might be a good idea if you're trying to think about something you can build whilst working a full-time job. So spend some time thinking what you might like to do first. Don't rush into anything, but here's a few business models that I think could be good. So blogging. Now, this might take you a year or two to fill. It depends on how much time you can put in, how much budget you've got. Um, but creating a website based on useful content. So let's say you have a passion for dogs. You create an affiliate website full of useful articles, how to train your dog, how to stop your dog barking, how to um, help a fussy dog. How to help a fussy dog. As in how to help a dog that's fussy with food, eat its food, all sorts of content ideas like that. Fill up the blog and over time you'll start to build up traffic. So Google will see your website if you're constantly adding content, if it's SEO optimized, and they'll start to rank you for certain keywords. Once you've got traffic, you can start talking about maybe online dog training courses and affiliate link to those courses, make a commission if your audience buys them. So blogging's cool. YouTube is also quite cool. So it's what we're doing here. We're documenting a lot of what we are learning. Uh, we will recommend products that we really like. And if you guys go ahead and buy them, we make affiliate commissions. And yeah, long term, we're trying to build a big, big community of like-minded entrepreneurs like us. So YouTube's another good one. If you've got the time, you like being on camera. Creating a video course. So for me, you can start with any passion you've got. And if it's teaching somebody how to do something, then if you know how to do it, you can quite easily create a video course, create some video modules using something like Udemy and sell it. Obviously, you need to find people to sell it to. That's why it's always, almost always important to build a community first. Um, offer something valuable and yeah, it, it will snowball. It will snowball. Print on demand. So merch by Amazon. Uh, again, if you're interested, we've got another video talking about what well, Ed's talking about, how you can start Merch by Amazon. Um, Merch by Amazon is a type of print on demand business, uh, definitely one worth investigating. There's also KDP, which is direct Kindle publishing. Uh, there's loads of different print on demand models you could use Shopify and Teespring. So there's loads of options. Amazon FBA, which is obviously what we do. Um, it would be the one I'd recommend the most because I have the most experience in it and freelancing. So if you've got time in the evenings and you've got a skill, you can sign up for the likes of Upwork or Fiverr and start offering your services or digital products. You can make some very good money doing this. Um, so there's some ideas for you. Create a business plan. Now, this doesn't have to be incredibly complicated. It can just be one page long and give yourself some action steps, what you want to achieve. Hold yourself accountable. You know, if you haven't achieved something for one week, don't give yourself a hard time, but try and figure out why you didn't do that and work on solving that issue so you can move on to the next stage. Keep it simple. So mentoring. Now, we started seeing, uh, well, we, we've seen business mentors and coaches in, in all sorts of different shapes and, and sizes over the years, but specific business coaches are something we probably wish we'd have started seeing sooner. Um, we started talking, I think, to the one we're now seeing for, well, it was about nine months ago, and she has been brilliant. So, so worthwhile. So don't be afraid to find someone to guide you, to coach you. Um, it, they take different forms. If you're starting out, then you can use all sorts of resources. Uh, mentoring comes in lots of different forms. As you can see the graphic on, on screen, uh, we've got Facebook groups, subreddits, forums. So when I was learning about building a blog and a website, I immersed myself in a Facebook group, um, all to do with affiliate marketing, and learn how to do it by talking to others, helping others, becoming a useful member of the community, helping people out, and then people wanted to help me in return. So, you know, how much time do you spend on social media, on Facebook, just aimlessly scrolling about? You could spend that time reading or add yourself instead of using Facebook and social media for just seeing what other people are doing why not just join loads of relevant Facebook groups and that way every time you're going on you're 
you're being productive with your time on social media. So when it, when it comes to mentoring, look for someone that already has a business similar to the one you want to start. So if it's Amazon FBA, you can find Facebook groups, subscribe to YouTube channels like this and start watching content, start learning, start recording and make an action plan for yourself. So yeah, mentoring can allow you to learn from other people's mistakes and it saves you a lot of time and you can learn a lot. It's one of the quickest ways to fast track your success, in my opinion. Mindset. So this sounds really, really cheesy, but all I mean by mindset is you're not going to get it all right in one go. So you have to almost be willing to fail and not have success straight away. So the picture of the iceberg you can see is an important picture to me. And the area of iceberg that you can see under the water is, in an entrepreneurial sense, the amount of work you have to put in that maybe no one sees for a long period of time. And the bit you can see above the water is obviously the tip of the iceberg. That's the, the success that yeah, everyone will see, but they don't see the amount of work you've put in underneath the surface. So when, when you see someone with success, don't just look at them and think, wow, I wish I had that. Look how successful they are. Understand and think about maybe the work they put in to get into that position. And yeah, I'd encourage you to make mistakes. Only ones you can afford, but mistakes are the only way really you can learn practically how to get better at something. So I was quite comfortable with the fact that we wouldn't be successful overnight. Um, I've become more patient over the years, but we embrace the fact that our first business failed. We were working on it for 12 months whilst working full-time jobs. Um, it sucked. Uh, it, was, it was annoying having to say to our girlfriends and fiancés, oh, look, I'm, I'm going out tonight. I've got to go and work. I've got to go and do this when I've been at work all day. And they want to hang out too. So, you know, it, it's difficult, but... You just have to clearly communicate with everyone and keep working away. Don't expect things overnight and just embrace the fact it's going to take you some time. Embrace the mistakes, learn from them and learn to enjoy failing and you'll become a very well-rounded entrepreneur. So what I like to do, and I spoke about it earlier, is share your ideas with those that are close to you. So it's one way I find of keeping myself accountable. But don't expect everyone to understand or fully accept your ideas because some people, and they might just care about you, will, because of their own experiences, be almost wanting to put you off doing it because to them it makes them feel uncomfortable. Maybe deep down they wish they'd have done something like that and they can't understand how you're doing it. So just be aware of that. And yeah, when it comes to sharing and oversharing, I like to keep quiet. So I don't like to stroll about and, you know, tell everyone how amazing everything is, is going and uh, that I'm building this great online business because I let other people do the talking. And, yeah, I, I prefer just to keep quiet um, and, yeah, out of the picture in that sense of things. So when it comes to automating your business and if you're working full time, this is something if you do from the start, you can certainly scale a lot quicker than maybe we did when we first started. I mean, I think we did a lot of automation without realizing, but the book you can see on your screen is one called Clockwork. And if you want a book that is genuinely going to change the way you think about building a business and how to actually build a business that runs itself, uh, the book is called Clockwork and it's all about designing your business to run itself like clockwork. It's about capturing systems and moving yourself out of the equation. So a lot of what we do in our Amazon FBA business is automated. So all stages of the business, it's why I can sit here and talk to you now. Uh, products are constantly selling um, across the world and I'm not physically doing anything. I'm talking to you guys on a camera. So yeah, if you can design a business to thrive and grow without you needing to work within it, then you're, you, you're on something special. So Think of it like this, you could work really hard inside your business every day doing everything. So that's one way and maybe, yeah, you could earn a lot of money, but you're going to need to be everywhere and anywhere at all times. Or you can create a business where instead of working inside it, you're working on the business and you're designing the business. You're not doing all the doing, you're doing the designing. So you're designing the sort of business you want. 
and virtual assistants. You've got all sorts of ways of automating your business without just having to hire someone full time. So I do encourage people to get out and learn how to do it themselves. So we did everything manually ourselves uh, from the beginning, but quickly found freelancers and people and VAs to take on the tasks that were taking up all of our time. In our Amazon FBA business, one of the first things we outsourced was the customer service because every day customer service messages are coming in and we, we decided to build a team of virtual assistants to deal with that so that we could work on finding the next product, on you know increasing our sales, on optimizing our listings, those sorts of things. Then you get to a stage where you can obviously outsource those tasks. So it's all about building your team. And when you have the cash flow, so when profit starts rolling in, you should start building your team unless your business is at a size where you're happy for it to stay at. So as I say, virtual assistants have been an integral part of our business plan. If we did everything ourselves, we wouldn't have been able to quit our jobs. So we're not graphic designers. Uh, we're not or we weren't marketing specialists. Uh, so there was so many different things we had to outsource because well, we couldn't do it all ourselves. We, we were in full time employment. We had an extra five hours each in the evening. So best practices for team management. And I will do some other videos on some of these tools at a later point. Uh, so Asana and Trello are great project management tools. I'll give you a clear overview. Keep it simple. Just use these project management tools in the most simple form to start with. So don't just set everything up for the sake of it because you probably won't use it. Keep it simple. So Slack is actually a great communication tool for keeping up and speaking to members of your team, your virtual assistants, your business partners, and you can store different information in relevant channels. So that's a good one. Map out your processes. So once you've started doing, take a step back and record what that process looks like. If you do this with everything you do, you can start to see which parts can be outsourced to other people and how you can remove yourself from all the doing. So video training is a great way to actually teach your virtual assistants or people in your business to do the tasks uh, that you want them to do. You can write everything out, but it's much easier and you'll save yourself a lot of time if you just build out video training tutorials and then save them in one central drive where they can access the training. And then maybe once that virtual assistant is doing the task, if you if, if the task changes, ask them to re-record the process how they're doing it and add it to the drive so then you're, you're getting this constant stream of updated tutorials without having to do anything the last tool is called zapier so zapier is a brilliant tool that allows you to automate a lot of tasks so if you've got a task where you're taking information and adding it to a spreadsheet from a bit of software very manual rather than doing it yourself or having a va do it you can set up a zap which will extract data from one bit of software and add it to a Google Sheet as one example. So there's loads of different ways you can use Zapier. Um, it's a very in-depth subject, but investigate. Zapier is a good, good tool for automating and taking yourself out of the working equation. So the one thing I would focus on uh, if I was to start from scratch again is building a community. So. This is the quickest way to build a very, very profitable business. So create a community. Now that might be a Facebook group. It might be a subreddit. It might be anything. You might just be using your own social media accounts to immerse yourself in different communities. Show yourself as a useful and valuable member of that community. So by creating a community first, you also know exactly what people like and what they don't like within your niche. So let's say you're obsessed with fishing and you decide to create a Facebook group which gives the best tips and practices or best spots to go fishing in the UK or in America. Over time, you can start talking to like-minded people, people that are very interested in fishing, nurture that community. And later down the line, if you decided to sell them a specific type of fishing line, the chances are they'd probably trust you because you're a valuable member of that community. So there's one example. Facebook groups are a great way to do it. Find your focus. Don't go broad. Don't try and create a you know, super huge group with no focus. Find one focus and become an expert in one area. So 
it's much easier to sell to one ideal customer rather than to try and sell to everyone. Because if you cater all of your value to a certain type of person, say someone very interested in night fishing, then it's much easier to create something for them that they find valuable. And in turn, they'll go and share that with maybe a friend that also likes night fishing. And this is how it snowballs. So let's say you love playing video games. Well, you could very, very easily start streaming or build a Facebook group or a Discord, which is similar to sort of a Facebook group. Start talking to people, helping them out, sharing the things you've learned, sharing funny videos of you playing video games, and you'll soon start building a community of people that like staying engaged with you. So Tim Ferriss talks about creating a group of raving loony fans, and it's it's so true. I think it was Tim Ferriss. might have been Russell Brunson. One of the two. But if you build a loyal tribe of just a 1,000 customers, you can almost do anything with your business because you've got a core group of people that really believe in your products. So, yeah, that's that's one solid bit of advice I got. Once you've got a buzzing community, you can monetize it. You don't really need to worry about how you can monetize it because you can do it in so many ways. Um, an easy way might be, you know, with the video game example would be to create an online course to share your expertise of maybe even how you built that group um, for other people that might want to do that or how to get better at that video game. Uh, there's so many different options. You could sell ad space in your community to relevant bits of software or brands that maybe like want to get in front of those customers. The options are endless. So, guys, I think I've gone on long enough, but I hope that insight has helped you out. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. If you're struggling, leave a comment below and we'll see if we can help you out. We'd love to give it a go. This is what this channel is about, helping you guys out five years ago i too was in your position make a plan and take action hold yourself accountable and yeah you can achieve exactly what you want to achieve you've just got to work out what it is you want to achieve i hope you've enjoyed this video please remember to like and subscribe we upload useful videos like this every single week and yeah uh, that's what this channel is all about so guys thanks for tuning in there'll be more from me here at ebusiness boss very soon thanks yeah.